All right, the objective of this lesson is that you'll be able to solve problems involving sales tax and tips. And we're also going to talk about uh, markups. So this is Chapter 6, 3, Part C in your textbook, Sales Tax, Tips, and Markups. So the first question is, sales tax, tips, and markups do what to your final bill? The answer is that all of these increase your final bill. All of these increase it. So sales tax is added on to your final bill in Florida. Sales tax is 6%. Some states don't even have a sales tax. Tips, uh, anywhere. I've, <laughs> I don't want to get into what's a proper tip because then your parents will be mad at me. Uh, typically, it's considered 15 to 20 percent of a bill as a tip. And then markups, this might be one you haven't heard of, markups are how businesses make money. So if you're selling something, you hope to buy it at a low cost, and then you mark it up, so you raise the price of it before you sell it. So then the difference between what you paid for it and what the customer is going to pay for it is your profit. How much money you're going to make. And markups can be quite large. Some items might have a thousand percent markup. Some items might have a couple hundred percent markup. And some items might have just a 10, 20 percent markup. All right. So all of the items that we're going to talk about today are going to increase your final bill. So I'm going to teach you a different way than the book teaches you. Uh, the book has you do it in two steps. I'm going to try to basically do it in one step. So here's what I need you to understand. We said that all of these things increase your final cost. So your final cost is going to be made up of 100% of the original cost, whatever the original cost is, plus the sales tax tip or markup. So you're going to pay 100% of the original cost. So like in this example, a Blu-ray player costs $140 originally. You're going to pay 100% of that, right? You're going to pay $140. Plus, you're going to pay the sales tax tip or markup. So you're going to pay this part in addition. So here's how we're going to do this. You're going to pay 100% of the original cost plus 5.75% tax. So in essence, you're really going to pay 105.75%. Because again, you're paying the 100% of the original cost plus the 5.75% tax. So we can add those two percents together and get 105.75. And now we're just going to use proportions like we've been doing. Like the is over of equals percent over 100. 105.75%, so that obviously goes above 100. And now, we can't really use the part and the whole or is over of to figure out where the 140 goes. So I'm going to give you another strategy. Our final answer, the total cost, I want you to think for a second, is your total cost going to be more or less than $140? It's going to be more because you're paying the 140 plus the sales tax. So your total cost or the answer that we're trying to find is going to be more than 140. Since on this side we have a bigger number over a smaller number, this has to be a bigger number over a smaller number. We said our answer is going to be bigger than the original cost of 140. So the 140 is going to go on the bottom. And now we're going to solve this the same way we've been solving proportions. Cross, multiply, and divide. So 105.75 times 140 divided by 100. And you're going to get $148.05. So that's how much you're going to pay for the Blu-ray player when you include the tax. Now... An additional question I could ask you now is, well, how much was the tax? 
the Blu-ray player was 140. I paid 148.05. So hopefully you can see that the difference between these two amounts is eight dollars and five cents, and that's my tax. So my tax is eight dollars and five cents. And again, I can just subtract those to find out what that is. All right. So all of the problems we're going to do today are going to follow the same pattern. You're going to take your either your sales tax, your tip, or your markup percent, add 100 to it. That's going to go over here on top of 100, and then your original cost is going to go here. So it's really very simple. So here's three more examples. We have a $2.95 notebook. We have to pay 5% tax. So let's set up our proportion. We're going to pay 5% tax plus 100% of the original cost. So we're really going to pay 105%. Our original cost we know is going to be the smaller number. So it goes on the bottom. Because we know our final answer is going to be bigger than 295 because we got to pay tax. Again, we have a bigger number over a smaller number. We have to follow the same pattern here. That's a 9. We cross multiply and divide, and you get 3.0975, but this is money, so we need to round it to the hundredths place. We have a 7 here, so we got to round this up to 10, so my final answer is $3.10. Okay, the next example. You pay $45 for dinner, and you're going to include a 20% gratuity. Gratuity is the same thing as a tip. It's just another word for a tip. So we're going to pay 100% of this amount plus the 20% gratuity. So we're really paying 120%. And just like before, the $45 we put on the bottom... Cross multiply and divide, and we get a final answer of $54. And again, I could ask you now, how much of a tip did you leave? Dinner was 45, you paid 54, so the difference between those is $9. So your tip was $9. And now the last example, $300 surfboard, the store's marking it up 200%. So you got to imagine they paid the surfboard maker $300. Now they're going to try and sell it and make some money. So they're going to mark it up 200%. So you're going to pay 100% of this plus the 200% markup. So really you're paying 300%. So again, I just added 100 to the percent, just like we did on all the others. The original cost goes down on the bottom. Cross multiply and divide. And you get the final price of the surfboard is $900. And that's it. So the next lesson will be about uh, things that cause your price to go down. These were all things that cause your price to go up. The next section, we're going to talk about things that cause your price to go down. So, for instance, discounts. Mr. Bywater out.